Good afternoon to you. Mark Sada, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Saturday, the 4th of June, 2022. Time for the hurricane outlook and discussion as we continue tracking potential tropical cyclone number one. It has mostly left Florida. We will take a look at that and some of the impacts that it had as part of today's discussion. All right. I hope your Saturday is going well. Sorry you had a little bit of a rain out down there in South Florida from this system. But you know what? As Annie says, the sun will come out tomorrow and it's already doing it today down in that area. We'll get to that. All right, tracking map from the National Hurricane Center. The low-level center is located over uh, East Central Florida, almost ready to get out into the Atlantic. It might try to become a tropical storm out here. I'm having my doubts, though. It hasn't done so yet. The upper-level winds are very strong. Climatology generally doesn't favor much development. Uh, it is June. We, we are in hurricane season but I'm not convinced. I mean, we'll see. Uh, the models are not quite as aggressive with this developing much after uh, Florida. Bermuda over here, you'll certainly be watching this closely as it could bring some inclement weather. Remember, this map, just a reminder, especially as we get deeper into the season, this is just plotting the center of circulation, especially when we have a real true center. Uh, unlike PTC1, there are multiple centers with this, not a true center just yet. But when there's a hurricane, tropical storm, but especially hurricanes, this is just the center line, you know, the center of the center, for that matter, and the cone of where that could be most of the time. This tells you nothing about rain, storm surge, inland flooding, or tornadoes. None of that is covered in this particular graphic outside of watches and warnings that are labeled on there. Just remember that so the, the effects can extend well away from that cone of uncertainty or those little symbols with an S or an H or an M uh, in the case of major hurricane when we eventually get those. All right, the broad satellite animation courtesy of Tropical Tidbits this afternoon. A couple things to point out before we look at PTC1. Strong upper level winds still cutting across the deep tropics. Pretty good convection coming off Africa. Strong upper level winds all over the basin right now coming in. These westerlies are very prevalent this time of year, not a surprise. This is why this part of the hurricane season is generally quiet. You got a lot of wind just kind of moving along from west to east against any system that might be trying to develop. Usually that's the case. If those winds are too strong, your system cannot stack vertically and you can't have a well-organized tropical system. And that has been the case all along here with this PTC number one. This is interesting. Look at that. That's sort of the leftover low-level center maybe, I guess, kind of saying, hey, you left me behind uh, between Cuba and the dry Tortugas, for goodness sakes. And then you got another swirl up here just to the northwest of Lake Okeechobee, and then just a large gyre overall, a large area of turning and then more turning out here. Yeah, that's disorganized. It is. But as I've said, these terms that we give these systems PTC-1, Tropical Depression, Tropical Storm, Alex, or whatever, Hurricane. All those names are just names that us mere humans label these systems as for organizational purposes, for messaging, the media, social media. It helps, yes, but it's the impacts. What are the impacts going to be, whatever we call it? That's what you need to be thinking about. I want to try to help steer people in that direction don't forget what we name it. That's not you know, to say, hey, forget it, but don't emphasize everything on what it's called. Look at it from an impact perspective, all right? Upper level winds, like I said, strong, all westerly across here, westerly down here, uh, impeding the system from developing. Those winds are pretty darn strong. Some of those wind barbs there in the 100 to 250 millibar layer of the atmosphere we're talking 40, 30, 40, maybe even 50 knots plus 50 knots, 60 miles per hour blowing across that system. That's going to push all those thunderstorms away from any low level developing center. And that's what helps and has helped to keep this system from strengthening very much. All right, the radar animation, we're going to animate it in a second because first I want to show you the good news. Most of the squally weather has left South Florida, uh, at least for the time being. And I mean, it should stay that way. But if we go back and put this into motion, look at what happened. This is from this morning, 200 frames later, all kinds of action moving across South Florida. You can even see as we rewind it, look at that sort of turning going on right in here, mid-level center. 
very disorganized, but it still brought a lot of heavy rain, especially to extreme southeast Florida. Some of the areas receiving more than 8, 10, maybe 12 inches of rain, some urban flooding. It had impacts, definitely, in some of those showers and thunderstorms and squalls impacting boaters, all the people trying to get down there and enjoy the weather. At least tomorrow will be a lot better. Cruise ships that are coming in, very busy cruise time now. Those are going to have uh, those captains and pilots, or whatever you call them. I guess you can be the captain of the ship and pilot it, whatever. Uh, hopefully these cruise industries have their own staff meteorologists, and uh, they're not just relying on people like me. I try to do a good job, but seriously, like Royal Caribbean and Carnival, etc., they have to have eyes on this stuff because it can affect more than just the comfort of people. Their very safety can be, can be in jeopardy if people are not paying attention. Lightning strikes, rough seas, whatever, you know, it, that's, what, that's what I'm saying here. These things have more impacts than we realize, all right? And this is a good uh, segue into this tweet from Dan Brown, one of the forecasters at the National Hurricane Center, kind of referencing a long time ago here, back in 2000, pre-Leslie that moved across Florida. Uh, and this tweet is referencing uh, a tweet from Craig Setzer, but up to 17 and a half inches of rain fell from that system in South Florida. Forecasting, messaging, and the ability to issue potential tropical cyclone advisories has hopefully increased the ability to warn of the hazards. And it's that word right there, the hazards. We want you to know what to expect. Not just what's going on, but what is it going to mean for me. And this is a time when I keep reminding you in weather, it's okay to be selfish. How's this going to impact me? And by extension, my friends, my family, my co-workers, it all begins with you. You have to be knowledgeable and you have to be on top of this and we try to help you do it. And the, uh, the reference here from Craig, you don't have to have a named storm to get serious flooding. One of my early tropical experiences here, he's down in South Florida, was October 3rd and 4th, 2000. Widespread deep flooding from a no-name storm that later became Leslie. In 12 hours, over a foot of rain fell on the evening of October the 3rd. See? So there you go. And our good friend Michael Watkins at the world headquarters of his Hurricane Analytics. He does work for GameStop.com now, just so you know. Uh, and he's got a great weather flow station, and it keeps up to date with everything. And he picked up about 8 inches of rain since yesterday. And I've seen a lot of this around on the Internet. It's just incredible. If you know where to look and it can filter out the junk and the BS, you can find what you're looking for, some good golden nuggets of information. All right, GFS depicting the disorganization of our system right there. There it is, spread out, not organized much at all. And we knew that. Already, you know, Telling you what you already know at this point. So let's see what happens with it as we go out into the future. Does it do much after this? No, not really. I mean, maybe, maybe it tries there. Uh, what is that, about 36 hours out? But that's still, I mean, look, everything is just so strung out. Those upper level winds cutting across the system. Uh, in fact, you know what? Let me just switch to the upper level winds, and I will show you. 200 millibar winds at that same time. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's the, I mean, there, that's all you need to know. Look at that. Very strong upper level winds. This is where the winds are lighter. A small anticyclone, upper level anticyclone, ULAC, down south. Our system would have needed to have been sitting in here somewhere. Uh, of course, the land would have prevented it from doing much, but I'm just saying it's not where it needs to be in order to be uh, in a favorable upper level wind regime. There's the low center at that time, and those winds are screaming through there in excess 20, 30, 40 knots, that's not going to do it. Um, we'll see. Maybe it still tries to make something of itself uh, going down the road. But let's go back to the 850 level real quick. I just want to show you out into time. It scoots on out into the Atlantic, and then nothing else out to day five in the Atlantic Basin to worry about. We'll cover this more on Monday when we look ahead to see what might be happening the rest of June. Yep, we can do that through pattern recognition. All right, severe weather season still in progress. Oh, how I wish I could be out there again. Yeah, I keep talking about it. I'm hooked. That whole beauty of the way the skies are out there, the landscape, and even the people we interact with, it is amazing. And, you know, storm chasing, uh, once you get past the hype, the hoopla, 
And yeah, you know, there is some sort of a uh, kind of a disrespectful angle to it that some people bring. It's true, and that's the same in anything. But the whole cinematic, appreciating nature side, um, and just the geography of the area, I can't get enough of it. Sorry, got on a tangent here, but man, I love that area. So anyway, I can't be there, but those of you who are, I can't wait to see your stuff on Twitter. You know, Jack Sillen's out there, meteorologist Jack Sillen, officially. He has graduated from Cornell. Congratulations to him. He's out there enjoying a chase Cation. Tornado threat, 2%. Wind threat, 15. Hail. Yeah, pretty significant there. <sighs> I know that area well now. Uh, maybe one more time before the end of the severe weather season gets here. We'll see. All right. Um, especially if the tropics can calm down. Slight risk tomorrow, Kansas, Nebraska. And again, the tornado threat, not zero, but not su substantial. Severe gusts. We saw some of those when I was out there recently. And uh, the hail threat also fairly substantial. You can get some two, three inch hail and that can do some serious damage. A lot of people researching that. I saw where, uh, just real quick here, bear with me, Mark Rober. You guys know Mark Rober from YouTube and some of the incredible stuff he's done. He's studying hail and that's pretty cool, I think, uh, using that engineering uh, background and his platform of millions of followers. That's a cool thing. It really is another gym, a, a cool part of the internet there. It can be so dark if you just don't look at the darkness and look at the light, the fun stuff, the, the educational side, like what Mark Rober is doing. It's all very positive. Anyway, all right, so day three, still that same area. It's like, gosh, you're killing me. I just left that area. And there won't be too many people out there. It's not a big high risk. So there's thousands of chasers and you risk, you know, getting killed in a traffic accident or something. Um, but seriously, you guys, pay attention out there. It is still severe weather season, as I lament not being there myself. Days four through eight, predictability too low, but you know what's going to happen. It's just going to kind of sit out here <laughs> the next few days, taunting yours truly. On Monday, I am going to take a little time to show you a few video clips from when we were out there. There's a few things that we saw and observed that I want to talk about as we learned from our expedition out there recently. Two times I've been out this year, out there this year, um, hoping to go one more time before everything kind of lifts north. And you know what? It is relevant because all those westerlies that come through, all the energy that comes in from these troughs that dig in that gives us the severe weather, once that goes away, then the upper level winds become more favorable over the Atlantic for hurricanes to develop. It's a timing thing. Nature it's all about timing, all right? All right, so we'll go over some of that stuff on Monday and uh, see what's up with that. I will be back tomorrow, though. Not saying I'm not going to be here tomorrow. It's just Monday. I'll, I'll throw a few things your way that I think you'll really like. All right, that is it for me. Have a great rest of your Saturday. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I appreciate it very, very much. Don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, it's great to have you along. I am Mark Suttoth for Hurricane Track. I will talk to you some more tomorrow.